NPM stands for Noping Production Machines. Canonical would like you to opt in. There's another Chromium OS distro. And someone questions XFCE timelines because that's not an exercise in futility or something, right? But don't let that get you down because this is another great day for Linux, everyone. Let's go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, and try to unravel this mysterious thing known as Linux. I'm Ben Stone, and joining me from the snowed end Island of Britannia. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think you said it's been snowing for like, what, two days straight or something like that? It started last night, yeah. And it, uh, it basically only stopped this afternoon, but throughout the whole day, snow all the time and it wasn't just a little bit of snow if you look outside the window right now mm -hmm. everything is covered in it oh man no not really snow here but we've definitely had some sympathy rain here at lgc actual in <laughs> athens um how much to report going i had to fix my uh, logitech g500s again again <laughs> uh, again because logitech uses junk micro switches and I'm the type of person who will disassemble a micro switch and replace that piece of copper that you can move if you look at it too hard. And mm -hmm. um, got it on the third try. I was very proud about that. If you follow me on the social medias, I know no one cared, but a life goal right there. If I can get that down to two and uh, I'd be very happy about it, man. Uh, so do, do we just want to get right into this? Because this kind of blew what? up. Just a little bit shortly after last week's show. And according yep. to some people, uh, it was in times, right? Or, or just maybe a silly mistake? Uh, well, that what it was exactly remains to be seen. I guess you could uh, find out if you go look at the patches that people have submitted to fix this. Because NPM, well, if you're a web developer of some type at this point, chances are you're probably using it or know someone who uses it. And... There's a lot of people using it. Uh, if you're doing anything with JavaScript or uh, really any type of uh, web development that does anything more complex than render a web page, probably want to be using NPM anyway. But it, there was a bit of a bug that if you ran uh, one of the uh, deployment options to, say, a production server where multiple people would be able to access it to use every to, to install everything they need to do all the uh, package management that comes from the actual PM uh, in the uh, little acronym there. Um, well, uh, people started to report that the servers were crashing or weren't working properly. And it turned out because that was because NPM had changed the permissions on uh, forward slash etc., forward slash USR, and forward slash boot. Yeah, if you've been using Linux for a little while, you probably know what those directories do and why their permissions are so important that they stay the way they are. And the moment you change it, well, <laughs> uh, things start breaking. And yeah. things broke. <laughs> it was, man. I mean, it, it's since been fixed. It was fixed relatively quick. Yeah, 57 not. Uh, mm -hmm. What you'd be dealing with is it would either crash your system various local apps or uh, just kind of stop your system from booting all three not not ever a thing you want to deal with what i was kind of interested in is of course this got some love on reddit because it doesn't everything <laughs> these days uh who wants it the Fillmore. he's like hey man i previously opened a pull request after noticing npm's weird handling a pseudo uh, but it was closed without a very good reason then you know internet's going to internet after that Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, th this should come. Uh, you might remember him. You might know him. You might love him. Mathieu Commandant uh, used to be on the show until he went and got one of those fancy LA jobs. And uh, yeah. before before he even knew this was in the show notes, I, I get a message. He's like, "I need a request to the document so I can <laughs> say my piece," which he did. Man, uh, he, he's. War and Peace, basically, is what he's written. I'll put that in the show notes, but let me see. To summarize it, uh, Mr. Commandon from Lutris.net, you might know. I've had a look at the pull request that this guy on Reddit was talking about, deleting whole chunks of code, changing a tool's behavior. Never, all caps, going to get approved. 
And this is an example of how Node community is immature. No experienced developer would send a pull request like that. Now, riddle me this. I find myself agreeing with him on this particular issue. He has a point, yes. <laughs> but I also do have an issue with they've not accepted any pull requests since November. Yes, there's also that. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I guess the two things to take away from this is, you know, basically don't test in production. And yes, uh, updating and installing and running something that's been out for a day, that is testing in production. And um, mm -hmm. if you're going to ignore pull requests, don't make bonnetted moves like this, maybe. I don't know. And to, to be fair, uh, Node the node package manager really did screw up with this one because even just running sudo npm dash dash help, you know, basic command, the one you would use when you're trying to figure out how something works, that changed permissions or forward slash etc or mm -hmm. etc or however you want to call it. How do you code to check and change permissions on something? Uh, <laughs> hey man for purism's got help. some new laptops uh new inventory with tpm by default free international shipping and don't you just want to go out and buy them man what is this tpm that's like trusted something with modules right yeah it is uh well there's the big big module which was intel's um uh uh frick uh, what's it called? The management engine. Uh, IME? Thing. Take it. <laughs> IME? Yes. Yes. IME. Uh, and uh, Purism as being the develop, uh, not the developer, the uh, hardware uh, seller, distributor, manufacturer, whatever you want to call them, uh, that's been trying to get rid of all the... Um, what the hell happened to my brain? Well, you're, you're on a lot of cold medicine, so we're going to cut you a little bit of slack this week. Hey, man, Purism, they've announced that they've successfully integrated the Hudson Head security firmware into the TPM equipped the room laptops. So they're like, we got some old stock that's running out. If you want some of that business, I'm wondering like what's heads and that's the open source computer firmware and configuration tool. The whole aim of that is to provide better physical security and data protection. It's kind of a neat little chain of responsibility. And uh, if you are uh, really interested in maintaining that uh, chain of trust all the way with knowing, mm -hmm. you know, with, without going full Stallman on your lappy, you know, it's like even the CPU needs to be open source, which is fine. I completely <laughs> respect that. And free international shipping. That's cool. What are we looking at? Uh, basically one you'd want to use. Oh, yeah. It used to be uh, you could get the $99 off with if you want to get the ones without TPM. That's pretty cool. But they're going to eat the cost on the shipping and all this fun stuff. Thirteen seventy nine. That's not bad. Have we talked with these people about getting one in to play with? Uh, we did. Uh, they said at the time that they were a bit busy with the new line that was coming up. And, well, here it is. So I guess it's time I send them another email. It's like, yo, totally down for that review unit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's definitely yeah. Okay. So up next, we have, uh, well, Canonical would like you to opt in to a certain thing. We've covered this last week. I, I don't know why I'm even bothering trying to be coy. We covered this last week and possibly the week before then too, although my brain's a bit fuzzy, so don't take my word for it. It's the uh, hardware diagnostics telemetry data collection that Canonical would like to do now. But having had a very bad experience with the Amazon lenses on Unity, they now are asking you if pretty please, can they please get your hardware data? Listen, man, the whole thing was, you know, we're going to be going to 1804. You're going to be installing that. There's going to be a checkbox there. Harmless data collection. There's nothing to be scared yep. about. And I know somebody, I'm going to get that email. Oh, you're shilling for a company? No, I'm not. I'm not. Trust me, of all people. It's going to be on by <laughs> default. But if you're going to be doing an upgrade, you got to opt into it, which is smart. Mm -hmm. That's a way to do it. I say kudos on that. And um, just something to look out for because you're like, hey, man, uh, I don't need people peeping on what, you know, video card and 
the amount of storage I have, that, that's, a, that's a personal dark private secret that I don't want to share with anyone, <laughs> even though it's anonymized. And you can opt out of that. Uh, just wanted to give that a mention. But coming up next, I the, this reads like a list of browsers that I've never heard of, Pedro, except except for Pale Moon, but only because yeah. we covered it. <laughs> we talked about it last week. Yes, we did. So uh, this is uh, this comes from How to Geek, controversial website. Yes, uh, they've had their share of uh, not so uh, accurate articles and some dubious opinions. But uh, every now and again, they put out a little uh, article, which inflammatory title aside, it does have a bit of a point to it. Uh, and this one is titled "Why You Shouldn't Use Firefo Firefox Forks." Who try saying that ten times fast? Uh, like Waterfox, Pale Moon, or Basilisk. Well, you shouldn't be using them because basically what the article boils down to is lack of support. Not a big community behind it, so there's not uh, a lot of people reporting bugs, actually contributing back to the project to fix those bugs. Uh, there's also the fact that most of these browsers are based on outdated versions, still XUL based versions of Firefox. So it's not, uh, it's not a good thing if you're actively trying to run these browsers in whatever type of secure environment, regardless well, of what the browser. there's a couple of arguments browser... to be made. I mean, one of them is, yeah. uh, I have plugin that only works, it, you know, it doesn't work with, uh, Quantum and mm -hmm. the article use done, ESR. Use <laughs> ESR. And they did go through basically a list of, you know, I don't want to use pockets. You can disable pockets and mm -hmm. all that fun stuff. It's, I, I kind of feel like in 2018, I, I would like some feedback on this because, you know, for me, if I'm going to be running something that is not Chromium, and these are things I run Chromium, Chrome, Chrome Beta or quantum or ESR. I think you should have a really, really, really good reason to do that. And other than I just, you want to be edgy. <laughs> I know it's going to make somebody <laughs> angry. I can feel it. I, I can feel the typing coming my way, but there is definitely some of that. I think we've all been through that phase. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, Firefox, it's great, but it's too mainstream. Let's go find something else that's also based in Firefox, but they called it a little something different, and they claim it's faster or it uses less memory. It's, I've been there. I was in university once. Uh, didn't like it very much, but I was there. <laughs> and some people, listen, I, I think you should use whatever you want. You just should be aware, because that is a very valid point with security updates. Yeah. You know, especially if you're using something with like a one person, two person team, you could get hit by something and you might not realize it or think about it because you're in the mentality. Well, I'm using this, this is different. And secure, you know, security, obscurity, mm, not, not really a valid mm -hmm. strategy for the most part. So Flintstones, yabba dabba do operating systems. And, uh, my own personal nightmare. We're going back to everyone having a terminal connected to... Listen, man, I'm just saying when the zombie apocalypse showed us up, we're going to be boned. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So it's uh, it's Chromium OS. We went from talking about browsers to talking about browser-based operating systems. And uh, this one is called Flint OS right now, but they say that the... Um, it will soon to be renamed to FIDE OS, F-Y-D-E, mm -hmm. FIDE, FID, FIDE, yeah. Uh, and it is, it is a Chromium respin. Um, they say that it runs on full-fledged x86 laptops or on single board computers like the Raspberry Pi, the Asus Stinker board. Uh, it has uh, support for touch screens like the regular Chromium also does. It, it, they claim that it is adding support for Android apps. I'm not entirely sure how they're doing that exactly, because I was the one who tried uh, Chromium OS when Chrome released the uh, Android support for Chrome OS regular, and it wouldn't work in Chromium OS. So whatever Google is doing with that is closed source. So are they paying Google for the license to be able to deploy that? What's going on here? Or are they using another third-party solution that's probably not going to work all that well? 
don't know. I just wanted to give it a mention because open source alternatives, because some people are, uh, uh, listen, I've already sold the soul to Google. It's like, yeah. take it, give me the services. But then again, we're, we're semi- I still want that Chromebook. <laughs> semi-public people, man. But that's the thing. It's out there. Try it. Why not? I don't see an yeah. issue. But you might be interested in Chrome OS because um, you can run Linux on your Linux or you're about to be able to run Linux on your Linux. Hashtag sort exhibit. of. Kind of. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's Chrome OS, and the big news, uh, it's a stretch, Chrome OS may soon be able to run Linux applications in a container. And I have to ask, does it need a container? It's, uh, it's Linux. It's running the Linux kernel. It has a desktop environment, admittedly. For HRE some reason, I didn't know one. this, that Chrome OS was based on Gentoo. No wonder it feels like it hates me. <laughs> yeah um it's it is linux it is not android it's not the linux kernel running a java virtual machine although it is probably doing that for the android apps but um it's linux it's still linux so i get the whole container fever that's going on mm -hmm. uh we have flat packs we have snaps we have app images we have uh Docker, if you want to go more enterprise-grade containers. Um, you have so many going on right now. I get that there's probably a market for using those containers in a netbook, Chromebook-style thing, but... I, uh... I don't know if I'm a fan of this. I don't, because one of the things I like about Chrome OS... Chrome OS is the keep it simple, stupid, the kiss mentality of it. If something goes wrong with it. This is why you've seen adoptions in schools and places like that. What do you do? You effectively has nuke it from orbit button built in. You just wipe it <laughs> and you're back. Yeah. And it's cloud-based. And all your settings and stuff are stored on the goose, which terrifies some people. Some would say, arguably, yeah, all right, probably a good reason for that. Um mm -hmm. And, you know, you're saying, you know, you definitely would rather see the Android apps run Android, on Linux. Yeah. Yeah, I would totally be down for that. That that would be neat, but uh, Google's Google is in the business of selling Chromebooks. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was just like, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they make a phone every few years, and they're like, nah, mm -hmm. there you go. But yeah, <laughs> Definitely. In, I don't know, man. It's yeah. neat. I mean, you've been able to run Linux, kind of. It was like kneecap Linux. They should have called it kneecap Linux on Chromebooks. <laughs> it's Crouton. You can actually run it in kneecap version in like a browser tab, or you can have like a separate X session that runs whatever desktop environment from whatever distribution you want. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to throw that in there. I mean, use case on a Chromebook to be able to run... Uh, I guess it makes sense, but that's it's going away from what separates Chrome OS from, hey, I got a Linux laptop. <laughs> yeah. No? Yeah. <laughs> oh. But I still like the idea of Chromebooks. They're like the netbooks of today, and I really liked the netbooks when they first came out. And they're netbooks with one advantage. They have access to the Play Store and... 90% of the apps currently available that anyone cares to run. So, yeah, yeah, I still want that Chromebook. They need to become a bit cheaper for, you know, but I still want one. Yeah, not in the world of tablets, buddy. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about it right at the top. Gave it a mention. Where is XFCE 4.14? <laughs> and if you're a long, long time suffering XFCE user, you go... Yeah, whatever. I mean, XFC 414 or like any major minor release is like a wizard. It gets released exactly when it <laughs> needs to. Um, now, this is from FossPost and they do a decent little write up and, you know, just highlighting some of the pains that they've gone through getting because there's like a halfway 413 right now with the mm -hmm. compositor, getting thing, getting everything moved over to GNOME 3 and uh, just the current status that uh, there's a couple of bits that still need to get over. And 
one of, one of the things that kind of kind of it's like wait a minute you, you actually got a point but uh, by the time they get everything moved over from gtk2 to gtk3 gtk4 is probably going to be out yeah <laughs> that didn't really stop them from uh releasing 4.12 with barely any gtk3 support yeah, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> Like I said, man, it's a wizard. It does what it wants, basically, man. Like, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. It's, I've been using uh, KDE 412, uh, KDE, no, XFC 412 uh, <laughs> on the uh, ThinkPad uh, X230. Mm -hmm. And some of the apps that they uh, say that currently have uh, no one uh, maintaining them, uh, and they would need someone maintaining them and someone with the uh, chops to port them to GTK3. Looking through so, some of those, I'm like, yeah, there are alternatives for that. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't really be sacrificing much. It's like squeeze. Uh, use file roller instead. Uh, let's see. The um, XF burn. The stuff for burning uh, CDs and DVDs and whatnot. Who the hell still uses optical MIDI in 2018? But hey, Brazero is a thing, and it's got a bit more functionality than XF Burn, so... I don't know, uh, I mean, long-time XFC users are... Here's something for everyone at home, if you're not familiar. Like, when you're talking about, oh, my desktop manager has this problem, this problem. <laughs> if you've ever wondered... Why an XFC user is looking at you just a little bit sideways <laughs> when you talk about the issues with your desktop manager because it doesn't compute. It's, it's like that. There should never ever be anything. Your desktop manager should never crash. There should not be any weird issues there. It's old as dirt, but dirt gets stuff done sometimes, man. Mm -hmm. It's the Debian stale of desktop managers, and that's what I like. <laughs> I have attempted multiple times to dip my toe in 2.4.13. It's got a long way to go. Because the main, the big selling point to me is finally um, geo compositing. Mm -hmm. you know, no, they say, well, that's already in. If you uh, want to risk it and build 4.13, the current Git version of 4.13. This, this is why I'm sauce. in charge of our production box. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Or you just use Compton. Just use Compton. I mean, Com I don't like using Compton. Compton's effectively not maintained. But hey, if you'd like to help, there is a Git involved page that'll be linked in the show notes. And I look forward to our new 414 overlords. Uh, but, mm -hmm. but they did mention, I, I think even they mentioned, it was like, what about progress to Wayland? I was like, man, <laughs> like 2040, possibly first quarter 2041. Um, mm -hmm. But somebody else was looking into Wayland. And uh, kind of threw it down back to Reddit. Uh, there was a guy trying to develop Waylon, and he mm -hmm. said, It simply baffles me how, at the age of information, there's virtually no up to date development documentation on the biggest advancement in Linux GUIs since the 80s. And no, no, he's not talking about XIs. No, it is not talking about that Vulcan compositor either. Mm. And uh, once again, I find myself saying he kind of has a point mm -hmm. because oh no, there is my... no documentation. Well, it's few and far between. I I immediately did the four panel cartoon character eating cereal at the end, going, mm -hmm. him. but um, <laughs> he's got a little mention. Maybe he's like, "Hey, virtually no documentation of frame synchronization." He's trying to set this up. He's like, whoa, 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 "Where, where, where's the big official wiki?" Um, forum, even an IRC channel. He's desperate. You know you're desperate when you're in the IRC channel. Um, <laughs> to that, I would agree, but I think the point's always been made is, listen, I can either work on the code or I can write the documentation. Pick one. Yeah. But if you're trying to, and again, this is Waylon we're talking about, the biggest... Uh, change to the graphical server on Linux since the 80s. Uh, and the scope of it is enormous. Mm -hmm. You're going to need a lot of people developing it for it to get where X is right now. You need 
documentation. X's documentation is like the sticking point for a lot of people. People say it's an effing mess. No one can deal with that. No one wants to deal with that. It's almost as bad as OpenGL itself. So why not fix that right from the get-go? I don't know. Listen, man. It's the guy's just got a valid point, and he basically threw he down. And <laughs> he's somebody, and I think a lot of people out there, you can't tell them to RTFM, man. You can't with this. Particular- you can't. There is no manual to read the FM out of. <laughs> I got a lot of feels for this guy as somebody who used to have to beg and scratch and uh, just pray for technical documentation on Sun Enterprise hardware. Um, <laughs> I feel you, bro. That's the thing. Another thing I feel is the beautiful people making this show possible, Pedro. All the love. All the love, man. I mean, we don't do the commercials that started out as a Patreon goal. We hit it. Yeah. We slammed right into it. Didn't take us very long at all. And people are like, hey, man, keep keep putting this out. We just want to sit back, relax with you. And just, hey, we're going to learn from each other. And that's been a very successful um Way to go about it, man. Plus, we don't have to read those mattress ads. Isn't that good? (laughs) It is actually kind of amazing. And looking at the Patreon page every now and then during the week, it's like, oh, 116 patrons, 231 wet stinky caches. (laughs) It's pretty good. You lot are amazing. And it still baffles me how two years, it's been more than two years since we've reached the uh, Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays goal. You lot are amazing. Uh, we got a bunch of ways, man. Uh, if you want to keep us in business, you can become our boss at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got a wish zone, a wish list thing for stuff we're buying anyway. But if you want your name on a wall held by a skeleton shown on a Saturday night show. <laughs> yep, you can. Yep, it is there. Everything from the impractical to literally battery backup batteries. But... <laughs> Again, come check us out on patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast because you can get some rewards. I want to tell people, we do an extra hour of content that I had this conversation mm-hmm. like two weeks ago. I meant to bring up I'm like, what? I was like, yeah, we, we do. We call it the pre pre super shows and which is air quotes, big old air quotes around our weekly production meeting that we do from. <laughs> 8.30 to 9.30 every Saturday about what's going on with the show and what's going to be going on next week. And that is available to all patrons. If you log into your page, it's in the upper right-hand corner. At the top, you can put that in your podcatcher and you get an uh, extra 45 minutes to an hour, which mm-hmm. is usually ended by, as it was last week, wait a minute, we've been live for like 20 minutes. <laughs> probably need to end the show. <laughs> Early access to a gang of stuff. You can come join us. Look look at the beautiful people in uh, Discord which is kind of cool. Yes. We can come hang out, and that's where we're at the other six days of week. And we got, we got the goals coming up. We are 231. I don't feel like doing math. I'm going to make you do math since you're ill. 19. 19, 19 wet stinky cashes. away from bringing Jill from Linux Check LA to join us every Wednesday because we need somebody who knows what they're talking about. we got merch oh, yeah. coming up, audio and video, RSS feeds, live audio for this show and for Saturday. We even have a Kansas alpha site, Pedro. How stupid is that? (laughs) Well, there's going to be, uh, well, chances are if we were going to kill each other, we probably wouldn't have ever made it to Kansas. It would have happened long before that. (laughs) And uh, you just made that possible. This is a staging area. (laughs) This is me putting a bad idea within reach, is what this is. (laughs) It is truly terrifying. Thank you. Thank you for making. And also a big awesome. thank you to uh, Michael McKee. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, oh, who yeah. is a new, a new Patreon. Michael thank McKee. You very much. If you want your last name shouted out, we'll definitely do that. You're also going to have your name in the credits, but I, I don't put the full yeah. last names just because people like privacy and some people like, don't tell anyone I support your just nonsense. And which we will that's also. Fair. Yeah. We, <laughs> that's uh, fair. LGC cares. We completely understand. <laughs> <laughs> so we like to take a look at uh, embedded things that rhyme with pie. And this is uh, not really a slice of pie unless it's a very particularly no, diseased a slice pie. of pretzel. 
<laughs> no, maybe, maybe not. Could be. Looks kind of pretzelish. Come and that on. looks like a pipe bomb. No, 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 Pedro. That's clearly a pipe cam, a low cost underwater. <laughs> no, camera. that looks like a pipe bomb. <laughs> no, 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 you're looking at it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this project aims to build a low-cost uh, underwater camera for shallow deployments from relatively off-the-shelf materials. So before you get started with this project, ask yourself, are you a fan of cavity searches? Um, <laughs> that, mm, that I'm just saying, but you can take a pie and it works. You can dip it, you can dunk it, and you can get... I'm guessing that's just pictures of aquarium, but dude's got an octopus, so I'm a little bit jelly. I always wanted... <laughs> no, little... I think he's actually out on a beach. Huh. At least judging from the other pictures, like, yeah, he's actually... Uh, uh, he took it out, he put it underwater, he got some pictures, uh, even made a little gif. And, yeah, it works. Uh, he made it out of some pipe and some... Uh, some of those uh, insulating joints and he put a little bit of glass with a lot of silicon around it so water wouldn't get in and hey there you go an underwater camera did you have to make it look like a pipe bomb though hey man listen we, we do <laughs> uh, i think as mir brought up we we have a thing called the tsa factor on weekly daily wednesdays and i would just like to warn everyone this this is a ta tsa acceptance factor of zero do not Nada. bring this thing within like a hundred <laughs> clicks of an airport. Yeah. Again, unless you like cavity searches, then um, that could be a thing. Uh, das Auto, yeah? Da, das Auto. Uh, well, uh, chances are you probably, if you bought a car recently, it has one of those fancy schmancy Android, um, Android Auto terminals. In the dashboard, or if you're one of those people, it has uh, an Apple Car or whatever they call it. But uh, these Vine folks have decided to basically tell you how you can build your own uh, car pewter. I'm, the etymological side of my brain is going. We're not entirely sure how we like the uh, hello car yeah. pewter. <laughs> the word car pewter, but hey, it's a. Uh, it's a Raspberry Pi with a touch screen, and you plug your Android device into it. It reads it. It can play the songs. It can give you the uh, navigation. It can do all the things that Android Auto lets you do. So that's good. You can literally upgrade your car and drop its resale value by several thousands of dollars after you've cut the hole into the dashboard to make that fit. But Listen, yeah. if you do it right, because I was just about to bring up and it's like the sketchy factor. I, yeah. I got friends that are ham operators and there's just like a gang of just smeared wires and radios. And like, man, I would never think about stealing a car. But if I cracked open this, get a crack it right back closed, man. And it's like, nope. Mm -mm. So that's the thing. That's cool. Raspberry Pi 3 and... Uh, mm -hmm. I get a bunch of that fancy stuff in TurboJet that I've never used. I mean, I've used the sat nav once and it let me down. So, yeah, it's got that going for it. Uh, that's going to do us, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to get in touch with us, uh, when they head over to LinuxGameCast.com, uh, tap that contact button. We got we got a little page there, and I, I do want to point out this is this is the way to get in contact. If uh, we can, we'll check it out. Like a YouTube comment, and somebody asked just a minute ago. Like, hey, I left you a... It's like, yeah, we don't always get the YouTube comments because we kind of just use it as a place to host the video. If we catch it, we catch it, 100%. Yeah. But this page, I mean, we're not using a third party. This is comes directly to us so we can put it on the show. I just want to make sure everyone's clear on that. And, um, yeah, come rock us there. You can ask uh, relationship advice. For the Saturday yeah. show. That, that's definitely a thing if you want to have some fun. But thoughts, hints, questions, allegations. Tell us what we got wrong because we know we didn't get anything right. And um, I think we're going to have to travel back to space, friends. Because, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, I mean, we were we were talking so. Uh, we were complimenting Strider on him having had a good opinion. Something that both uh, Ven and I agreed with. Well, here's something we don't agree with him on. So he uh, he's talking about uh, the bit about learning Linux that was also uh, on the uh, feedback for last week. 
And, uh, well, I was uh, the one who brought up Arch and then agreed that Arch was a good way to actually learn some of the niggly stuff and mostly why operating systems break all the time. But it is uh, why you can... Why, in our opinion, it is a good learning tool, but Strider disagrees. Can we end the myth that using Arch is a good way to learn Linux? Don't get me wrong, I like Arch a lot. Sure, it has flaws, but it's still one of the best distros around. But running Arch will only teach you how to run Arch. Again, a deep knowledge of Linux isn't tied to which Pedro, distro you Pedro, use. Pe pe it's, yeah. We've let everyone down. We have? Yeah. I just realized oh, something. Oh, I didn't... No, no. Uh, this... We we could use some of that sweet sweet patron cash, and I, I you you could have read this entire segment by bal while balancing a baguette on your nose. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> Don't have any baguettes. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you at home. I did a cursory research in Athens for berets because I was going to kind of mime it up. Couldn't find it. Sorry to interrupt. I, I just had to throw that in there. Yeah. So for newbie users. Strider would suggest going through any general Linux book that has good reviews and go through it from back to back, uh, then you should be able to take it on your own. Keep an eye out on humble uh, book bundles. They often have good stuff. Once you know about Linux, there are no quote-unquote user-friendly or quote-unquote advanced distros. There are just different flavors shipping with different tools and different versions, but in the end, it's all pretty much the same. Now, Strider, I... Well, let's get the niceties out of the way first. I will agree with you on your last little paragraph there. And that's where it ends. Um, I wish the Arch Wiki was a thing uh, back in 2005 when I started using Linux. Uh, running Arch is going to teach you a great deal many things, but the most important skill that you will get from it is knowing where to look. Knowing where to search for answers. N knowing that there's a place out there in the, on the interwebs that tells you exactly what you need to do to get something working. That is where Arch wins. Hey, man. Um, first off, don't, don't, not, don't, don't knock Arch. Arch. Arch tears. Arch! Arch tears are delicious. <laughs> I've been drinking them for years. That's how I've actually reversed an aging. If Atomic was wondering, it's all Arch tears. Um, but... I, I like to give it a good ribbing, but I understand what Arch is and what it's useful for because it is a good way to learn Linux because it has a massive community behind it. We're not talking about wiki community. We're talking about interacting with other people who are running Arch as well and experiencing... Oh, I'll get to the books in a moment, Strider. And the, and the suffering because, you know, what that, that part of that community, what communities are really good at, what, what do communities foster? Yeah, man, let, let me tell you what they foster, you know. All the stuff that helps you get interested and excited about Linux. And maybe it, maybe it's just trying to outdo your friend getting something working or making more extra wobbly windows to show off at, you know, <laughs> your lug. And it's really good for that. And when you have that massive community there, it, you look at what the kids are using. I love saying that because I'm an old man now. Uh, <laughs> is like back in the day. We we're talking like when I was a teenager, we, we would get together and have like the Halloween edition Red Knight installed parties. That's what the kids were using. The old people were using Slackware. I'm not kidding. Now you fast forward, then you get the Fedora that was doing a thing. Then it was uh, just Ubuntu for a hot minute. Then it was Mint. Then now it's Arch. That's what the kids are using these days. And yeah. That, that's good. I, I don't see a way to knock it. Whatever gets you interested, whatever makes you learn, man. And books are great. Don't get me wrong, Strider. Books are great. But I, for one, would much rather sit down with a laptop and try to install this messy, messy operating system that uh, I have to basically follow along with the wiki because I have no idea what I'm doing because I just started using Linux right now and someone on the internet suggested that, that I run Arch. I would much rather have that experience and going through the wiki and f doing it right then and there on the laptop than reading a book, than sitting in front of the laptop and going, what did I just read? Do, do you know what I wish existed when I installed Linux the first time? <laughs> hmm. Google. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Back in the 90s, there was no Google. <laughs> oh, no. Hard mode. 
uh, the big <laughs> thick book came in use and I uh, use nets, man. That, that gets you through it. That, that was the time. But hey, man, you like Linux? Go play with it. It's a fun time. Make yeah. some awesome stuff. Um, we use it. We love it. And uh, we love all of you. LGC cares, ladies and gentlemen. But I do believe we're going to get out of here. Come join us next week. Um, same. I don't want to say bat time. That, that's too cliche. And I'm not saying ping one time because that sounds weird. Just come hang out with us <laughs> next week. Um, that'd be the thing. Let's roll some credits. Oh, yes. And it's, uh, no, it's always great to see when you, when you, you're not at like a Linux convention or, uh, an aggregation that you know has a lot of Linux users to it. You just run into a Linux user out there in the wild. It's like, you start talking about it, swapping experiences. Oh, what'd you start with? Oh, this. Oh, I started with that. Yeah. Uh, oh, what do you run now? Uh, you Ubuntu? Meeting people. Yeah. Uh, yeah meet space <laughs> is definitely important. I mean, uh, and, you know, back to your point, I, I think a lot of schools should be focused on teaching reading comprehension and curiosity, because if you have those mm -hmm. two things, you, you can you can do most of the learning. <laughs>